Taylor Sheridan always really likes me to swear on TV, apparently. I'll say damn instead of whatever. He'll say, uh, hey Gator, what, what does the, the script say? Well, it says the F word. And he goes, read the script, Gator. I said, my, my grandparents watched this show. How could I, you're gonna make me swear? Hey everybody, Gator here. Character and real life chef from the hit TV show, Yellowstone. Gator, what the f is that? Grilled octopus. Today I'm gonna to be preparing corn mock shoe, very special dish that I've been making for many years, feeding the cast and crew, um, and that me and my family have been making for generations as well. I love making this for the cast and crew of Yellowstone because it's a great way to put out a nice vegetarian dish that's still extra spicy and flavor forward. Most important rule of mock shoe, fresh corn. I can't stress this enough. You can do it with frozen corn, you can do it with canned corn, but it will never be as good. So step one, get you some good, fresh, local corn. For those of you who haven't shucked fresh corn before, don't be afraid of the corn. Just get in there, it's gonna be messy, we're gonna clean up later. Get you a nice bowl, a uh, good size one, because there's gonna be a considerable amount of mess and debris here. I recommend finding you a nice cleanup person. We have a, a rule in kitchens, uh, always cut towards your buddy, not your body but we're gonna break that rule today. You're gonna to cut towards yourself. You're gonna get your thumb right here on the corn to give you a guide, and then you're gonna just draw your knife back on that cob of corn. If you're not comfortable with this, you can always put it on the cutting board and do a downward motion, but I promise you, if you're comfortable with a knife, this will be faster and it will be better. You can see the mess. You can see there's kernels going everywhere and juice going everywhere. You're gonna to wanna to hose down your kitchen afterwards. And then you're gonna take the back of your knife and you're gonna scrape the cob of the corn. You can skip this step if you want, but I promise you it will not be as good. You're gonna want, you see that, that little bit of, we call that the milk of the corn, and it's, it's, it's just basically corn juice, and it's what, it's what adds all your sugar to your, your dish, and, and the sugar's gonna be important here for the Maillard reaction and for the caramelization of the corn. What's it like on the set of Yellowstone? Let's start with saying that it's hard. We're out in the elements, we're in Montana, we're in Texas, we're in Utah. We're doing things the hard way every day. I've been there for almost six years now where it's been an absolute pleasure, but don't think it was for free. It was, it was, it was a ton of work. So we've made a sufficient mess now. You can clean up now, or you can make a little bit more mess than clean up later. We're gonna clean up just a little bit now so we get all this sticky corn juice off of everything. Now, when you get close to finishing your corn, I uh, recommend you get your pan or pot nice and hot because you're gonna need a super hot skillet to do this. Um, I like something with a little depth to it so that you don't make more mess, which we're still gonna do, so don't worry. Uh, nice medium high heat. Um, we'll get that nice and hot. We'll get your oil in. And you're gonna want a good amount of oil here because uh, it needs to coat all the corn. The corn will soak up a lot of that oil, so don't be generous. I've got me a good cook wooden spoon here and you're going to need this because you're going to need to scrape the bottom of this pot a lot get ready you're going to get your corn in and you're going to want it to sizzle like that we're, we're essentially pan frying this corn you're going to want to give it a nice stir right away to get all your co corn coated with your oil to get that caramelization you're going to need on this corn just let it sit stir it every few minutes for about 45 minutes do i have a favorite character on yellowstone well obviously i have one absolute favorite character it is myself Gator, what the f is that? Grilled octopus. Everybody on our show's a complete pleasure to work with. Rip and I have always been really close. I know he seems like a hard ass, but he's actually a sweetheart uh, in the end. And me and Luke Grimes, who plays Casey, we're good friends and he's moved up to Montana, which is always nice for me because I'm up there a lot and I get to go see him. And truly, it's, it's, it's been a real pleasure working with everybody on the show. Everybody's real nice and uh, we all have our diva moments, but we, we try to keep him pretty under control most of the time. So our corn's coming along nicely here, and what you're gonna wanna do, especially once you get to this stage, you'll notice uh, you get a lot of corn start sticking to the sides and the bottom of the pan, and you're gonna wanna scrape that into your dish. When you have those little bits that stick to the bottom of the pan, down in South Louisiana, we call that the gradu, and um, it's the little crispy, crackly bits. So our corn's coming along nicely. It's about a third of the way done now, so we're gonna start prepping our veggies. We're gonna do our onions, our red peppers, our jalapenos. We have a big one today, but you can add as many as you want, as hot as you want your dish. Just know that the, the more you add, the more you're gonna sweat. I'm so glad I sharpened my knife. 
<laughs> and we're just gonna nice rough chop on everything. Um, everything's gonna saute in that pan really hard. So you don't have to be exact with your chops on this one, but you know, a nice uniform chop on everything. Rough diced, you know? How many people do I cook for on Yellowstone? Um, well, that's a loaded question. Uh, I remember back in the very beginning, uh, the good old days, if you will, of Yellowstone, when we just had a small crew of uh, 100 or 150 people. But as we've grown as a more and more popular show, our crew can grow upwards of 300 people. And I've seen, I've seen bigger numbers of up, upwards of 500 and 600 people on Yellowstone. And when it, when it gets to be those numbers, it's, uh, it gets real exciting in my kitchen, I, I promise. We gotta bust out the big pot. I know a lot about onions, I cook onions in everything I make almost. I have cried my eyes out a million times. The best thing I can tell you is just get your knife super wicked sharp. Um, but if you do want some cheats and hacks for onions, uh, they are out there. The best one I can ever tell you is if you really suffer uh, with the, your onions, uh, one, fresher the better. Um, an older onion will make you cry more. It's got a lot more acid in it. You can get goggles. I've done that. I mean, I've chopped five million pounds of onions, more than you could ever imagine. Uh, truckloads and truckloads of onions. So goggles help if you need them. Uh, you can throw your onions in the fridge or the freezer for a few minutes before you cook them, and a cold onion will not make you cry. You can try all those old wives' tales, match, match stick in the mouth or whatever you want to do. Uh, none of them work. It's cooking. There's going to be some tears sometimes, you know? I think I go through an average day, 40 to 50 pounds of onions a day. On a big day, it's 40 to 50 pounds per dish. You always want to make sure you keep the seeds out of your, your dishes when you're using fresh peppers like this. Some people will leave them in. It adds way too much heat and you're going to hurt somebody. So always take your seeds out. So our corn is getting really nice and brown now. You're starting to hear the crackle, almost like a popcorn. That is what we want. Okay, onions, peppers, jalapeno, and tomatoes going in now. And we've just got a few more ingredients to add after this, and then we're there. Growing up in South Louisiana, this is when you can always tell somebody was cooking something nice. You could walk down the street, and if you smelled onions cooking, you knew you were going to the right house. So this is when your friends start showing up. All your aromatics are coming in. Um, we're not gonna add a bunch of herbs or anything to this dish. It's real simple, but it's real good. Uh, we're gonna cook this until the onions are completely transparent. Uh, last thing, we're gonna add a, uh, about a quarter to a half cup of sun-dried tomatoes. It gives this dish a nice little bright acid flavor. Get those a nice rough chop straight in. Okay, sun-dried tomatoes are in. We're gonna add a nice big pinch of salt. I always use kosher. And we're gonna add a second pinch of salt because why not, right? In with your Cajun seasoning. And since uh, it's gator and it's today, we're gonna add double Cajun seasoning. We're gonna do double Cajun seasoning because the last thing you'd ever want is for your mokshu to not be spicy. It is supposed to be a spicy dish. There's nothing to absorb that heat from the jalapenos and your cayenne other than corn. So it really comes out one of my spicier dishes that I make. And uh, a lot of people really, really love it, especially my my big spice eaters. I've had a lot of good stories on Yellowstone. I've, I've been there so long and it's been my whole life. We've had some pretty <laughs> wild nights and wild days. I remember drinking a whole fridge full of beers in Rip's cabin one night and then getting tattoos and then showing up the next day to go to work and uh, make biscuits on national television. That was probably one of my craziest stories. My only tattoo I've got and I got it right before I did my big biscuit scene and swore in front of my whole family and the entire nation on TV. It's great because um, Taylor Sheridan always really likes me to swear on TV, apparently. Mm -hmm. That's how you make a biscuit. And I'll always go and do these scenes and, and I'll go and uh, I'll say damn instead of whatever. And um, he'll say, uh, hey Gator, what, what does the, the script say? Well, it says the F word and he goes, read the script, Gator. I said, my, my grandparents watched this show. How could I, you're gonna make me swear? Uh, all right, our mock shoe is looking really beautiful. It's got a beautiful little red and brown color. Don't ever forget, it's time to add the butter because, well, you know, it's butter. And that's gonna give you your nice final touch for your mock shoe. It'll bring everything together. And as you see, it's get, 
start, starts to dry out a little bit, you lose a lot of the moisture from the sauteing. So that butter is just going to really kind of blend everything together and give you a nice little uh, lather in your pot. All right, our mock shoe is done. We're about 40 minutes in, maybe 45. Uh, now all that's left to do is plate it up and bring it to the dinner or lunch table. All right, now it is time to eat our mock shoe. Uh, I hope that you brought extra because this is just enough for me. Mm. Such a simple thing. You get the acidity from the sun-dried tomatoes. It really brightens it up. You get the real spiciness from the Cajun seasoning. And of course, that good, sweet, fresh, local corn. Mm. One of my favorite things to eat, totally. This has been delicious, guys. And I think I might go cool down with a Beth Dutton smoothie, um, the classic two scoops and three shots. Gator. Yeah. Would you mind making me a smoothie, please? What kind of smoothie? Two scoops of ice cream, three shots of vodka. Your smoothie, Miss Beth. Bless you. Find this recipe and many, many more in the new official Yellowstone Dutton Ranch cookbook. You can get this on delish.com. Thanks everyone, I hope you have a good time eating. Thank you.